Hello everybody and welcome to the Nook on the Voluntary Virtues Network. I'm Mike. That is Matt. Cheers. Tim. This is Tim. This is Ryan. Well, as tradition states, um, we talk about beer a little bit first. If you're wondering why Steve isn't here, he is on a secret mission to the Frosty North. Yes. And he'll be back uh, mid, uh, mid-January. So Steve will be back, so don't miss him too much. He's a good guy, and he will return soon, safe and sound, from his secret mission in the Frosty North. <laughs> um, I'm drinking tonight uh, Stone Levitation Ale, which is... Uh, pretty much anything from Stone is good. I think every one of us who uh, had beer on the show has mentioned Stone as well. Pretty much everything they do is good. Every now and then they put out something that isn't so good. So Stone's always a good choice. It's made locally in Escondido. So always got to support your lo- local brewery there. So Matt, what you got? I'm drinking uh, Kalamazoo Stout. Kalamazoo? Yeah, I know. Uh, Bell's Brewery in Michigan. It's actually pretty good. I chose it based on the ratings on the internet, which I think I would have rated it slightly lower, but it is good. I haven't had too many good beers from the East, so cheers to you guys. Uh, didn't um, didn't the internet say it was like the best beer that's ever been created it, in the history of all it was rated, or something? Yeah, it, it was right. rated 100 on one side. I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. I checked another one, said 89. I was like, we'll average out, I'll buy it. I, I think it was worth the buy. I don't know if I'll buy it again, but it is good. Fair enough. Right, turn it says well. it was uh, brewed with Brewer's Licorice, which I, I don't know. Brewer's Licorice? What exactly is so, that is. So that is obviously not wild licorice. It's something that's been bred specifically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Any of our viewers. Yeah, I know. You please let us know. Comment on YouTube. Tell me what, what Brewer's Licorice is. Is it grown in a basement, like, deep down below, like, the, you know, um, surface of the earth, right. you know, EMP proof bunker that's like nobody else knows how well, to get it, because I've never checked, heard of it before. We're in our EMP proof bunker, so we can't yeah. use the internet right we, now. we are currently <laughs> in an EMP proof bunker and have no access to the internet. So. Oh yeah, it's a damn yeah. shame. Yeah. <laughs> we can communicate with Steve on his secret mission to the Frosty North through similar means, but that is something completely it's different. Top secret. We're using <laughs> Residents of the Earth, it's a Tesla thing, we yes, can't really yeah. talk about all of it right now, because, <laughs> yeah. Um, Tim. Kombucha. Kombucha. Yes, a a multi-green kombucha tea. Nice. Nice. Kombucha always delicious, and it counts because it does have a minor slider. It's point zero zero five alcohol, I believe. It make it makes the cut, and it's always delicious and very healthy. So I always dig kombucha. I'm without a beer, but if I was drinking a beer, I'd drink. 90 shilling from Fort Collins, Colorado. 90 shilling. Can't get it out here, but... Okay. Oh, wow. I'll have to look for this then. Yeah, 90 shillings. It's good beer. All right. Sounds good. If any of you guys want to throw us some advertising dollars? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, 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 that whole time I had... That one time I did that with Sam Adams did not work out well at all. Yeah, we, we got no contact from the Besides company. That's a season to sister. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, so uh, tonight's topic, I'm kind of surprised we never really just did central banking before. We never just talked about it. I mean, I th- obviously we touched on it when yeah. we did Bitcoin, but we never just really just went out there and started talking about central banking. And I guess um, this is the way, I, this is the way I, I explain it to people. Here's a starting point. Okay, so 100 years ago, money used to be this. Silver dollar. This is silver. It's an ounce of silver, slightly less, 90% silver. Ding. And then they said, well, you know what? You don't really need that silver to, to move money around, so we're going to print these out. It's, it's ink on paper, and this isn't important anymore, and it's not related. So here's your ink on paper. Well, um, at one point they did. They, at one point they were, they both yes. existed at the one time, yeah. But so the transition was... You know, you could turn you could turn this in and get one of these, so you didn't have to carry around a whole bunch of coins. Nineteen thirty-six. Originally, paper money was designed as a receipt. Yes. So it was a bank note, bank right. goods, yeah. Yeah. and then you were going to come back and get your goods later. But at some point, those started just being traded by themselves, and that's how paper money came about. Was I'd rather you just trade that note, the person go grab the gold, mm-hmm. than the bank runs game. Yeah. And you've got. People coming, the, the bank printing up more notes than mm. gold they have. Coming up with, like, being like, oh, well, nobody's going to come for all their gold today, so let's just write up a couple extra receipts and 
you know, see if we can just squeeze out a couple more bucks out of today's business. And we got a couple more bucks. Yeah, a couple more. Uh, kind of where they go, the 90. fractional lending, correct? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that was probably the, the, the original idea for fractional lending was somebody was just like, well, let's do this. And then they probably talked to another banker friend who was like, hey, you know what I've been doing? And guess what happens? Nobody finds out about it. You just you throw in some some extra receipts into, into the till that day, and eh, nobody's ever been coming at once. Problem is, they all came in at once. It's, it will always <laughs> happen. Eventually, you put so many of them out there, and something bad happens. People bring back receipts, and there is no gold or silver or, or you know, I mean, some older examples probably there was no grain for it. You know, here's your yeah. receipt for your grain. Oh, no crap. crap. Yeah. And then over seven generations, you can just uh, ditch the silver and mm. trick people into thinking that the printed hey, stuff this, is the real thing. Yeah, yeah. This, this thing, was, we've been trading as money. It's obviously money. Well, you yeah. can even outlaw it and make it against the law to hold the gold and silver. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That, uh, that, <laughs> was, well, that was, what was that, 19... 33. Was that, was that 33? 33? Yeah, it was 33. Okay. Uh, Roosevelt did that, and that was the, the, the beginning of the end of the gold standard was... Yeah. Roosevelt saying you cannot own uh, uh, gold and demanded that everybody turn in their gold. The thing that's funny about that is when you make a proclamation saying turn in your gold, everybody goes, oh yeah, what gold? Yeah. I don't have any gold. Like that's what people do. They know when something's up. You can smell a rat when there's a rat. So. And but even now, right? Mm -hmm. If you if you try to sell gold from that era. I mean, they'll confiscate it if yes. I'm not mistaken. I've really? heard something like yes. that. I don't know exactly how it's written up, but I'm sure anything they can steal, they will. Yeah, yeah. yeah, uh, yeah. Well, there was, a, like there a, was a woman who had, I think, somebody 25 or something in a security box. And I guess one of her uh, great uncles or something had worked at the Mint. Mm -hmm. And they had, they had issued so many. And I guess they had some type of recall on it, but he, there wasn't a recall. He didn't do the recall. And when she found it in her... Safe deposit box. They took it. I'm not sure exactly the full details on the story, but she was in. Uh, it was in court for a little while, and she was trying to get it back. Yeah, I think I might have read something about that too, where, yeah, they just volunteered, you know, that uh, that they had this, and they just immediately came and confiscated mm -hmm. it. Yeah, this is ours. I'm sorry. Thanks for holding on to it for so long. I haven't heard the story, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's true. If yeah, it's true. No. That would not surprise me at all when it comes to the actions of government. To be like, oh, well, see, there was this law we passed like 80 years ago. Sure, you weren't alive then, and you didn't have any input on it, but hey, guess what? We're taking your shit. <laughs> so that's kind of what they do in general. Um, uh, but, the, but what always gets me nowadays is that so it goes from, well, here's your, your, here's your receipt for your gold or your silver. Yeah. And then it was just, oh, well, here's your receipt. No, this isn't a receipt. This isn't, I, I can't go, what does it say on here? Federal Reserve note, what's that? Oh, it's a bank. What's that? It's the Central Bank of the United States. Well, is it a government agency? No. No, no, it's not. Why does it say federal? Don't ask too many questions. You're, gonna, you're not going to sleep federal very well. Express. Yeah, it's about <laughs> as federal as federal respect. No, no, uh, no relation whatsoever. And now you have it to the point where, what is it, probably, last I heard, 1% to 3% of U.S. dollars are actual physical notes. The other 97% yep. is literally ones and zeros going back and forth. So, like, you're, what, what they're saying that your money that you have on account, uh, you know, they only have to keep, what is it, 10% of it as reserve now, I think. So, you know, you have $100 in your account, they only really have 10 of it. And so it, it's, it's to the point now where if you go to a bank and you have like 10 grand, you go, hey, I'd like to close my bank account and get my 10 grand out. You literally have to give them day's notice. You can't just go in there and be like, I want to close my account. They'll be like, we can't do that. Because they don't actually have 10 grand to give you. Probably don't even, you know, at all in the whole bank, they probably don't even have it. No, yeah. that's absolutely think, true. Yeah. I've, I've I, cashed a check for over uh -huh. that amount before, and it wasn't a day's notice. It was a week's notice. Yeah. We had to, we have to get cash sent in. It's like a special uh, yeah. requirement or request that you have to make. 
crazy. The, the, the armored truck really has to show up with a heavy load. Well, not only that, but then you got to sit down with the bank manager for mm-hmm. a half an hour and, and go through a, you know, a whole questionnaire about mm-hmm. what you're going to do with it and everything. With and, your and own what, money. Yeah. <laughs> Luckily, the, when I did this, it was four or five years ago, and I just BS my way through it and uh-huh. told him I was a sheep herder and needed, you know, feed for the sheep and all <laughs> kinds of crap, you know. That's a good That's response, awesome. yeah. 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 Was, now, did you give that response to the, are you a terrorist question? And you said, no, I'm a sheep herder? Or like, you know, because I mean, like, I bet you're talking to a bank manager for half an hour, like, I don't care what they're asking me, I'm seeing like a bead of sweat, sweat on my forehead, just being like, Jesus, you know, like, what are you going to ask me it's to? It's my money. My yeah, <laughs> like, seriously, how many questions do I have to answer to not, you know, have like the FBI start asking me questions or something? I just want to get my money out, you know? Yeah, I took it as a ridiculous uh, mm-hmm. thing, and so I gave him ridiculous answers. I mean, yeah. Uh, I figured it was, uh, what were they going to do? Yeah. So well, it's it was a game they're playing, so you might as well play well, you know. Play exactly. Play. Yeah. Game, right? I think another important thing to talk about is inflation, though. Mm-hmm. Oh, you yeah. Know, inflation is theft. Inflation you know? is theft, they, yeah. I mean, yeah, they, they are, every time that they print more money, that makes all the other money worth less. And, and that, is, that is directly taxing anybody who is using that currency. Well, so it's not taxing them, it's taxing generations down the line. Well, anybody who yeah. uses that currency after that point. Yeah. Especially at that point, if you have savings, then those savings are reduced uh, in value. And it, it's, it's, with the fact that they make people use the currency, it, and then they inflate it. On purpose, they, by the way. Mm-hmm. On purpose. Yeah. It's stated goal to inflate the currency, like, what, 2% every year? Yeah. That's, they say something like that, you know, I don't know. But of course it's more than that, but they always try to say, like, well, inflation is going up only 2% a year minus gas, f- food, and um, something else they, they, they exclude from that. It's like gas, food, anything and something Anything that's else. rising. Yeah, pretty much. You know, anything that anything people buy every day, they don't, <laughs> yeah, they don't include it in their, their metric of what is inflation. Right, that yeah. changes because the CPI used to include all that, and, mm, yeah. and it's been taken well, out. It's obviously manipulated to make their numbers look better. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. so it was once valued upon the silver and gold, so basically now what is it valued on the labor or you know each individual they claim it's backed by the full faith the and full credit faith of the united states <laughs> right which, always thought so, so which is, is basically we have a gun in your face so no issue so so during so they got rid of the gold and silver and they, the and the paper went and all of a sudden they issued starting birth certificates is this correct in order to make account for the federal reserve because i believe that's how they how we're going to get the how are we going to have them pay? Because you know, security. a lot of different things changed. Yeah. It, it, I've heard that. You, is, had, you hadn't heard I that? I have heard that. Oh, you yes. have heard that. Is, okay. is that the general argument that like a birth certificate is like collateral for... Basically, for yeah, no, I've heard, heard they actually Federal are Reserve? traded. Okay. I heard they are actually traded on the stock exchange uh, as far as that goes. Birth certificates. I heard that too, and that is like in way deep into... Yeah, I mean, that's basically. pretty deep in there. Uh, to yeah, me, no, no, I, I, it, it's backed I, on the, the fact that we are going to threaten... Future generations with violence. Right. That's so exactly. every dollar yeah, pretty is much, yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, I think guarantee. I think that's what the whole full faith and credit of the United States. <laughs> yeah. is. That, that we can you tax people faith, in the future. Don't worry about it. We got this. We've been doing this for a long time. Yeah, you, yeah. you should have faith that if you don't use our money, we have lots of guns. <laughs> I think that's their whole faith part. And uh, the the I guess the other thing that it is backed up by is. Um, Probably the most, the I think kind of the most depressing thing is that it's literally backed up by oil at this point. That you know, mm-hmm. you, you know, it is the you know, the officially full faith and credit of the United States government. But there is a thing called the petrodollar, or at this point, as of this day, a month ago, two months ago, or something, that used to be called the petrodollar. It's yeah. done now, by the way. In case you guys thought that. That's the way it was still working. It, it's, there's no longer a petrodollar because Russia, China, and India have all gotten together and they are buying and selling oil without using the U.S. dollar. So, so that's why gas prices. Yeah, right. yeah. Petrodollar, there was an agreement in the early 50s between Saudi Arabia and the United States that, the, that oil will only be bought and sold in U.S. dollars. Because after the war, there was no gold attached to the dollar anymore, so it was worth nothing, but it was worth something because guess who won the war? Guess the U.S. did or came out on top. They were bombed less. So 
the agreement was that's how uh, oil will always be bought and sold. So now we get to the point where apparently the whole entire world is sick of that, or at least most of the world no longer wants to do that. So now it's going to be interesting to see what happens with this whole central banking thing. Who's going to win out on that one? Because every country in the world has a central bank, and you know, who's going to get together with whom? Not everyone. Yeah. If you want to know the ones that don't, mm -hmm. it's the ones that you're all the war propaganda is about. Uh, <laughs> accurate, right? Wasn't it? Didn't, wasn't, um, I'm not, pretty sure all the, all the countries the that, yeah, the U.S. wants to attack don't have central banks. Yeah, I, I, I think the one I remember for sure who, who was doing something and... And um, it was Libya. Yeah, it was Libya. I'm not saying anything good about Gaddafi. I don't like Gaddafi, but he, he was trying to bring back the concept of what they called the gold dinar, which was the which was having gold and, and silver coins based on certain weight, similar to what the dollar was. And so when he started to do that, uh, pretty fairly soon after that, when he after he started talking about it, that's when the propaganda ends. Uh, Gaddafi started and well not the propaganda against him but that's when the whole uh, revolution of a sort in Libya I don't think the revolution in Libya was anywhere near as of a popular uprising as it was in Egypt I think there was definitely some some malfeasance going on in there but so speaking of war Ah, central banks and central war. banks and uh, war well see here's the thing this is where it gets rolling I like that yeah they the way that it all works right now is that, or, well, I take it back. No, it's always worked this way. Yeah. <laughs> it's always worked this way. What am I talking about? The way it works now, what I, guess I, guess, I guess I was just thinking that my thought process from earlier, but... Are they fun both sides of the war? Yeah. No. They, no. No, no. No, no. no way. Yeah, no. Oh. Both, for, for many, uh, if not all the wars for the past 200 some odd years or so, uh, have been... Uh, you know, there's been a lot of banks making bets on both sides of the oh, yeah. war. A uh, really, really super good example is World War I. Yeah. That was, there were uh, all the... Right after the Fed. Mm -hmm, all the uh, banks in the United States and the uh, Bank of England, they were making bets on who was going to win the war. They were buying bonds of the prospective nations involved in the war. And so... When Germany started to lose, that's when the U.S. got involved because all the banks decided to put their bets on the United States. And that's when it was over after that. It was really, yeah, it was all a bit, World War I is a horrible situation, and it was, yeah, all about debt and bonds and horrible stuff, yeah. Yeah, they definitely are, without central banks, I don't really think you could get wars on the scale that you do now. Well, you couldn't get wars, right? Because then you have to go door to door sales and you, you gotta go money for the war. Without a central bank, it's much harder to collect taxes. Because with central right. bank, you can just print as much as you want, or not even print anymore. You just type in a keyboard. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, trillions of dollars through a keyboard. Control P. <laughs> <laughs> da -da 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 -da! What's in zeros? Um, I heard. A, I heard. A, we were talking about stats and stuff involving this and. Uh, one of them I heard was that, so the entire cost for the Iraq war uh, so far uh, is more than all the known gold in the world. So that goes to show you right now that you couldn't fight these sort of wars they have today without all this debt. There's no way it could happen. It's impossible. Oh, yeah. If you, if you actually look at the amount of debt mm -hmm. that's been created through the war, yeah. it's like unimaginable. I don't know. I don't even understand how anyone could advocate for that. I, well, I do. They're making money. Out no, of yeah. a ton of money. There was a video that came out a couple days ago about. Uh, it was. I guess. I really, really want to listen to it again. I heard part of it, and the guy's just coming up with these ridiculous arguments for it. He was the, uh, or is, the uh, head of Mastercard for Asia. Okay. And he's talking about why Bitcoin's so horrible. And his entire argument is like, well, it's not centralized, it's not government sanctioned, like everything just straight peel the authority again of like all well, the reasons I do like Bitcoin. Yeah, <laughs> all the reasons everybody who is involved in Bitcoin likes it is like, oh, you mean like there's nobody or most likely nobody it's behind the taking wings. fifty, sixty percent of the yeah. you know, taxing it and yeah. For some reason rationalizing that they can you know, have a maintenance fee that they take out of your bank account every month that's five bucks. Automatically. So, yeah. So is there, is there actually somebody 
getting paid to go dust servers every month and like everybody's collective maintenance fees for that bank is paying their paycheck or something? Like, I don't understand that. The electricity for the zeros. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a power bill for, you know, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. I don't know. I figured it out right there. I don't there. think that works out to five bucks a person, though. That's just my math. Today on the podcast, I learned. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, well, I want to talk a little bit about the psychological effects of uh, inflation also. Because, right, 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 right. Absolutely. Uh, you know, generation after generation, things tend to just get harder and harder. And I think it's kind of plain to see if you look through your own generation I was given the story about my, my my grandfather in the 20s and 30s was able to expand uh, our family farm uh, to what it is today my, my grandfather was able to expand it uh, a little bit but had to contract it in the 80s when he started losing money and now we're essentially just sitting on the land you know being you know overly taxed and and barely able to make uh, any money off of the land anymore. Uh, but at least my generation, I mean, me and my, my sisters, you know, we all have houses and, and things like that, but you know, I'm not gonna go out and be able to buy a thousand acres of land. I'm not sure if, uh, uh, it, you know, I'm as hard as working guy as my, my great grandfather was, but mm -hmm. it's just, it, that possibility isn't there anymore. Yeah. And uh, even with foreign countries, you know, I was talking about South America, you know, they tie their money directly to the U.S. dollar. So any inflated money immediately inflates their currency, mm -hmm. and they're in no shape to uh, to take that on as, as the you know, U.S. population is. So, I mean, they're being devastated yeah. uh, in a much quicker way than, than the U.S. population anyway. Well, the euro dollar destroyed, I mean, wrecked havoc on the Italian, you know, Italian economy and a handful of other economies. Having the euro coin come in, euro dollar. I mean, so it, the way it uh, affected the. the well, it's people. not only devastating, and then, I mean, the math, right? I mean, it's just a math equation. The math doesn't work. So whenever that math equation finally stops, yeah, you know, it's just it's a slow death until it's a quick death. It, it also uh, <laughs> that also punishes people who are saving, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. encourages people to take on debt. You know, like the rational thing to do. Hey, I'd like to buy something in the future. I don't have the money for it. Hmm. I guess I should start saving money, but if you have an inflation rate that's, you know, slowly but surely getting larger, the idea of saving starts to become almost kind of silly. Like, why? Yeah. Put, so I'm putting money in a, uh, in a, you know, nice dirty oak tree or in my mattress or, or in a hole in the ground somewhere. It's going to be worth less later. Yeah, it's just going to sit there and all of a sudden I dig it out 20 years later and it's like, oh gee, I can buy a cheeseburger with a $20 which, bill or something, is, you know? Which like, also does the opposite effect we're saying is making people want to go into debt. Oh, well, yeah, mm -hmm. 100 bucks today. Well, oh, you know, I'm 100 bucks in 10 years. That'll be nothing. Yeah. But okay. that... The smartest thing you can do with your money right now, right? As soon as you get a Federal Reserve note is spend it immediately. I, I would say that, yeah. You, you got to be, uh, you got to choose wisely on what you're actually, if you plan on saving that and what you're going to buy with that. But I wouldn't recommend holding cash. I mean, there's even commercials saying, you know, if you can't afford your Christmas presents, you know, you can put it on credit and it says, get the credit you deserve. So it's like, you, you get the credit you deserve. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just pass it on, you know, it's... You deserve this cuz. Yeah, you deserve <laughs> this good. Well, that's a little bit of a scary thought, right? Because, you know, we're looking 10 years ago. That was sort of the beginning of the, of the end until, you know, 2007. So you start to see those, you know, little trickles now. I, I think it was uh, Fannie Mae, Freddie, Freddie Mac. They're starting to uh, pump in the... The 3% no no down loans again. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, All of a sudden, you can get a home loan now for uh, for 3% yeah. down. And when, what was it in 08 when it finally, when it went, up, when it went bad in 08, what was it? Was it was sure. it more than 3% or less than 3 Or was it 3% then, too? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. That would be a good, good thing to look up. If, if they're they're trying to if, say you can do it with even less money now, like, I don't know. Well, well no money down is is probably about as low as it gets. Unless yeah. They start paying you to, to take out mortgages. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they're they have no idea what they're doing. That, that's why I, I 
I don't believe in centralized planning. It so doesn't you, make sense. Yeah, I mean, no. when you get into central banks, too, you're also looking about who are they going to loan the money to. Mm. Do you qualify? Now, say you're a small little guy with a really great idea that isn't some large corporation. Large corporation, you know, has some influence somewhere in the central bank, maybe. No. Or, <laughs> or some thug in another country that the government wants to overthrow their government to steal all their shit. They'll, I'm sure they'll yeah. throw some notes so, 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 you know, well, sorry, we can't give you the loan, and you know, so, you know, a year later, someone comes out with another product, or six months later, you know, a large corporation comes out with some product that's real close and to, to to what you have, and they got the funding for it, you didn't, and there goes that, you know, one more. Yeah, you know, and in. The thing is, is that every time like there is a fiat currency where there's nothing backing it, it always collapses. To I the mean, value of what it's printed on. Yeah, right. which is paper. So you can either you know, uh, you know, write uh, you know your grocery list on your worthless dollar bill now, or burn it you know for heat, or you know maybe use it as a plaster of Paris. You know, make you know like a piggy bank out of old U.S. dollars and plaster. You know, I don't know. But It'll happen uh, one day. Yeah. Um, Couldn't tell you what, and I'm not going to try to predict anything. Yeah, but the uh, euro has only been around for what, 15 years? When they introduced it in 2000, they started printing it out 2001, 2002, something like that. Yeah. And it's already, it's already a dead letter. You know, like it, everybody knows it's not going to be around that much longer. Every the you know, and that wasn't like you're saying. You know, it's pure math. There, they had so many countries involved in that that were already heavy in debt when they signed up for it. Mm -hmm. So, the only option now is to, and I'm already kind of trying it, is to get other countries, just anybody else to sign on to it, so they can be like, oh, well, look, we got more access to more debt over there. Yeah. You know, they, they've got a couple extra serfs that we could write some, you know, mortgages for, or whatever, you know? Yeah. Maybe somewhere we should have started, and we're going to end with it, maybe, is a uh, definition of uh, fiat versus, uh, you have a definition of fiat? Uh, a, a perfect, I haven't actually thought about this. I think you would need to add. <laughs> I'd say it's fake and not backed up with anything, pretty much. It's just yeah, simply non existent. Right, fiat yeah, currency is. Oh my gosh, I don't know yet. But, you know, hopefully in the future, like, I see this as, as, as eventually going away. I think this is, and it may come back with a vengeance at one point or another because it ebbs and flows. I mean, the, there's been fiat currencies. You know, for a long time, a couple hundred years back, you can go back and find them little little ideas, little trial balloons that didn't work, and and or just simply the the, the fractional reserve thing gets out of control, which it may as well be uh, completely fiat at that point. But it makes me wonder, like, uh, is there any sort of way to would they start trying to like issue like loans so you could buy uh, like you know, of an Android or something to like, you know, have your way with or something. But you know, if, it, if it's an what? Android, we're thinking it's sentient, you know, to... So maybe, maybe a good question would be, at the point where we have robot sex, Okay. would we have dollar bill slots or is it going to be a QR code for Bitcoin <laughs> or is it a change? Oh, or, you know or, or, or the, or the, the like, really funny scenario of the, of the, of the magnetic strip of swipe, ah, but yeah, where yeah. do you swipe it? Ah, yeah. <laughs> you know? Will like, there be an implant? <laughs> I think we're done. I mean, a new battery maybe? You know? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, a QR code, I guess that would work, you know, there just kind of... Yeah, yeah, air bits. Uh, show, show, show the 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 cell phone to the eye of the Android. Like, oh, QR code, huh? This this, this will work, right? Still money? You know, it's just uh, yeah. Uh, I think we're like pretty much out of time now. We can't really go in depth here. Well, but but we are planning to do a robot sex episode at one at point or another, and probably go through the episodes and check on our questions. Yeah. So, not promising anything, but we're going to try to go over our questions from all the episodes. Yeah. Pick out all the good ones. So those watching, yeah, if you've got an idea for us to, for, to do a show on that we haven't talked about yet, drop a line. Ah, oh, yeah. Podcast yeah. ideas. Please send us some. Yeah, we've, we've, got, we've got plenty of ideas to do on our own. Eventually, we've got one for robot sex for sure. We'll eventually get to that, but any other ideas anybody has... String it our way. We'll see if the balloon floats. If it floats, we do it. If it doesn't float, we don't do it. 
Odds are, you send us a balloon, it's probably gonna flow. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're pretty flexible around here. We can find a way to talk about just about and any so. subject, so. Yeah, let us know what you wanna hear us talk about. Hey, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week. Cheers. Have a good weekend.